All right. As I discussed last segment, President Biden has doubled down on his devotion to the priorities of the left. Now it's time for Republicans to respond. Well, earlier today, members of the House Freedom Caucus released their plan, Shrink Washington, Grow America. It's a framework for policy changes they deem necessary for them to consider raising the debt ceiling. So let's talk about those main priorities. Joining me in that discussion, Congressman Bob Good. He serves on the House Education and Labor Committee and the House Budget Committee. He represents the 5th Congressional District of Virginia, and he's in the district right now, so he joins us by phone. Congressman Good, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Tony. Great to be with you. Thanks for working with me on travel this afternoon, but thanks again for having me. Well, uh, glad that you've taken time to, to join us. I want to get your reactions. Before we get into the details of the House Freedom Caucus, I want to get your reaction to the president's uh, proposed budget. Tony, you have to wonder, is he malicious with his intent or is he just fiscally and economically illiterate when you have $32 trillion in national debt, about 100000 dollars per citizen in the United States when you've had two excuse me ten trillion dollars in new spending in the first two years of administration that's caused massive inflation. And I want to make one little side economic point for a moment. Historically interest rates are ra- are increased or raised to combat a hot economy to try to cool it down uh, to prevent inflation or combat inflation. I've never really agreed with that philosophy, but that's what's been done. In this case it's not a hot economy. It is government spending that's caused the inflation, and then the president's regime is raising the interest rates, which causes further inflation from a housing standpoint, a rental standpoint, and so forth. So on, how does the president respond, though? He throws gasoline on the raging fiscal fire, and his plan is $6.9 trillion budget, the largest budget proposal in the history of the country, projecting a record $2 trillion deficit, uh, spending $20,000 per American citizen just this year in that budget proposal, not to mention $5 trillion in tax increases, which would further crush the economy. Uh, As you know, Tony, we are realizing record tax revenue because of President Trump's strong tax-cutting policies that are in place. Historically, you cut taxes, you get more revenue, you get what you incentivize. If you increase taxes and penalize productivity, you get less of it. And the president either doesn't understand that or is just being punitive or harmful to the American people. I don't know the motivation, but I know that this this policy or this proposal is dead on arrival. There's no way Republicans in the House will take it up. We're not going to let them do this to the American people. Well, it, 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 you're absolutely right. It penalizes those who actually are productive and create jobs and economic opportunity for, for others. I want to talk about the proposal from the House Freedom Caucus because you've stepped forward with a very clear uh, wet pathway forward. We were just talking with a mutual friend of ours. We were talking with Dave Bratt about the, the, the critical nature of where we stand as a country where we have uh, $32 trillion in debt projected uh, to, to grow even higher, another 20 added to that. So let's talk about the specifics of what the House Freedom Caucus is proposing. Tony, as you know, two months ago we made history with the willingness of members of Congress to challenge the status quo of leadership and to work together, unite together around a framework to bring transformational change to Congress. The, and now you're seeing history again where we are taking that, that opportunity and proposing real cuts, something that hasn't happened in decades in Congress, as you know. And if you, the summation of what the Freedom Caucus is proposing today is about $900 billion in reductions in the near one year or so from now, meaning going to 2022 spending levels, which would mean 2019 pre-COVID for non-defense discretionary spending, and, and then that would allow defense spending to stay as proposed. That would save us near $150 billion per year this year and going forward. Uh, in addition, uh, eliminating the $400 billion that the president has proposed uh, for uh, in, this, in this current budget, what he did with the Democrats to uh, do the student loan transfer scheme, $100 billion of unallocated, unspent COVID funds that we want to claw back. 
nearly a hundred right. billion, eighty billion dollars for the IRS, uh, and then also uh, eliminating tens of billions of dollars of green raw deal environment climate, climate uh, spending that was in the uh, the omnibus bill, the phony inflation bill, reduction bill, and the uh, phony infrastructure bill, uh, and then putting work requirements back in place for government subsistence for able-bodied Americans, which will not only cut spending estimated $30 billion a year, but also will put, give a shot in the arm of the economy because those people get into productivity. Uh, they begin right. to generate income. Uh, it allows employers and job creators to expand and to invest and so forth. So we got to get the country growing again, but we got to cut the spending, and that's what the Freedom Caucus is proposing to do. And um, and we're up against a break, but I just want to point out one thing: you, the caucus has made very clear it protects Social Security and Medicare benefits and keeps defense spending, as you pointed out, at current levels. So this goes after some of this uh, discretionary, frivolous spending. Um, Bob, great to see, great to talk with you. Thanks so much for joining us on this Friday, and uh, we look forward to seeing this uh, move forward. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate you, my friend. Take care.